Hello and welcome. Today we are checking out Wanderlust Travel Stories. So I should begin this by explaining this is a little different. Well, it's a lot different, really. Uh, this is, you could even not call this really a game. Uh, what's going on here is it's a, it's a travel-inspired game. We are putting ourselves in the shoe, shoes of one of four different travelers and sort of partaking in their adventure, some sort of story. It's a uh, super story-driven, lots of reading, kind of a choose-your-own-adventure, really, kind of game. Um, and choose-your-own-adventure, sort of, I should say. But uh, let's just, we'll see what's going on here, though. Uh, it's been de de uh, developed, that's the word, by Different Tales. came out on September 26th. So um, let's try this one out and just see what all is happening here. So uh, I've skipped the like, little intro part, but basically we've got four different people. We're going to choose which story we want to partake in now as we, well, as we get into here. And we'll see what we're going to do here as we go into chapter one. Okay, so uh, we can choose Tomek's story here in, in Europe. I believe it's only I mean, it's a one-hour story. We've got uh, Adelia's story, which is a three-hour thing down there in Africa. We can come down here to Antarctica with Henrietta's story, or way over here to Thailand with Martine's story. Those are the four stories in the game, and they all have different links, I guess. Uh, let's check out Tomek up here. It's not a love story, apparently. Let's see what Tomek has. So, the beginning of the thing, we all meet up, we're in Easter Island, and we're all meeting up and chatting about our stories. That's kind of the beginning here. So, we'll, we'll begin here, I suppose, in Hangaroa in Easter Island. Back to the beginning. They all read to meet for dinner at the same restaurant where they'd first met. These are the four individuals we're all sitting in Easter Island right now, having a chat. Ordered enough food to keep them at the table for a few hours, but soon they were talking about the different restaurants and bars they'd been to. Barcelona is what we're talking about. I guess I'll never forget the food and drink in Barcelona, Tomek said. But maybe there's because I went there on my first important journey. Oh, Martin explained, exclaimed, is this the beginning of a story? I bet it is. He made a funny gesture. He thought he was surprised at his turn already. What I'm about to tell you might seem like a love story, but it isn't. Well, not a com conventional one, at least. Started and ended in Barcelona. Okay, so we are Tomek. And we're beginning a bit of a journey here. A bit of a story. In, uh, I guess Barcelona. Let's begin the story. All right, late night, Saturday, June seventeenth. We're gonna look in someone's eyes. I mean, why are you afraid of traveling? She looked at me over her drink, a playful challenge in her eyes. So, uh, choose your adventure, sort of. We're gonna choose uh, what we're gonna be picking here, and as we pick things, things will change. We've got stress, and we have, I think. Uh, I'm not sure what the other one is. Uh, something else. As well as, as well as cash. There's a few things that will sort of play into these things that we're choosing. Uh, and depending on what we choose will affect the story, as far as I understand, later on. Um, why do not? Why am I afraid of traveling? I just prefer home. Not fear. I smiled back, just like living where I live. I don't see a point of forcing myself to go outside my comfort zone. And it was true. Getting here from Warsaw was a nightmare. The gut-wrenching fear of flying, the crowded bus from the airport, the unknown language. And yet traveling suits you, she laughed. Under the table, her foot touched my calf. Obviously. Oh my. Um, traveling suits you too. I said with a smile. She smiled back. Come here for a second. She took out a ridiculous Polaroid camera. I took a picture of us. I'm having such a good time. And she was... I couldn't take my eyes off of her. Oh, I got a cheerful boost. I'd only known for half a day. She'd asked me to take a picture in front of the Sagrada Familia, and then we started talking and walking together, and suddenly, here we were, lost in Barcelona, having the time of our lives, drinks in our hands, sitting at a table on the sidewalk, the hot, balmy air clinging to us, and light full of music. I went to get another drink. When I returned, she was gone. There's only a picture of us left on the empty table. She'd written something on the back. Next year, same place, same time. Three X's. And I said, what a jerk. Okay, one year later, here we are in Warsaw. I apparently am in cheerful and calm. So how's your holiday so far? Asked Magda. She was sitting across from me in the uncorrect characteristic cafe we always met at, sipping her latte occasionally. And she told me about her kids, job, and marriage. Seemed like it was my turn to entertain her. My holiday? It's great. I smiled. I've been going on long walks, reading, catching up some books, TV series, playing some games for my pile of shame. Oh, and look what I found. I took out the Polaroid. 
Faded Polaroid with a handwritten message. Next year, same time. Yeah, yeah. You're impossible, Magna rolled her eyes. You had some mysterious romantic date that people only dream of, and you just went back to your life like nothing ever happened. But the poor girl's waiting for you to do something. All right, all right. Give me a break. Now you're interested before she gained momentum. Okay, so now, as we choose things, something's going to happen. We can either um, re relieve stress, or, or, or maybe have more stress, or maybe get tired along this adventure, uh, depending on what we choose. So, uh, I'm one step ahead of you. Which is going to release, reduce my stress. I'm feeling a bit optimistic. Just wait and see. What are you going to do? I took a deep breath. I'm going to Barcelona. I announced and enjoyed her shocked expression. I went straight. Um, oh, oh, we can go straight home or we can have a drink and maybe um, a little less stress. That was going on there. Spend another hour going by. Went for a drink to celebrate my, de my decision, but my thoughts soon drifted back to the coming journey. Oh, yeah. Stress is going down. Excellent. Go to Barcelona, I repeated, looking at my reflection in the bathroom mirror. Piece of cake! It was already Friday afternoon. I had been in the bar by Sunday night at the latest, but I was confident about the plan I had. I checked my bank account. I got 500 euro. And the whole trip. That should be enough. Get to Barcelona, book a hotel, buy some, the, some food, see a city, take her somewhere nice. I took out a map and started planning. Okay. Couldn't wait. I decided to pick the first option that suited me best. So I can take a train. Which, uh, I guess... I'm not sure what the... Oh, oh. I'm just debating. Should I take a train? Should I go by car? Should I go by plane? Again, I don't like planes, so it's going to increase my stress. Or go by bus. Uh, you know, I'm going to drive there. Ooh, everyone wants a good road trip. Check the map for a car route. The bar to ba road to Barcelona was pretty straightforward. Mostly highways. Closer look at the, at the route. Check other options. No, let's, let's check on the things we need to go for the, for the trip. Pack everything in the small cabin bag. Yeah, yeah. Um, I could take. Here's what let's, let's, we got. What? An ID, clothes, charger, power bank. I will bring a suit and shirt. No. Raincoat? Forget it. Swimsuit? Um, maybe. Yeah, we'll bring one of those. Uh, some PJs. Oh, I'm out of, I'm out of room. Okay, forget that. Forget that. Um, don't need water. I can buy water on the road. Sweets and snacks? I don't need that either. Electric trimmer? Um... No, no, we're going with beard. Uh, condoms? No, no, we're not that. <laughs> we're not that confident. <laughs> um, magnet from Polaroid. How about, how about a travel guide to Barcelona? That seems like something to have. Can I bring anything else? Oh, oh, okay. So everything else. Um, oh no, it's not gonna fit my cab bag. We're gonna, gonna put it into a backpack. Let's do the backpack. So now I can bring my PJs, my swimsuit, and raincoat. Always be prepared. Oh. Okay, never mind. Maybe not always prepared. We got pajamas and a swimsuit and a travel guide. Sure. <laughs> That'll be great. No one needs water. Okay. Uh, let's take a closer look at that uh, that that look, that route there. Lots of uh, things to consider. Price, travel time, comfort, accommodation in Barcelona. Uh, let's check the gas prices. I had to cover about 2,500 kilometers. Gas for the journey there would be about 300 euros. That's a lot of money. Um, that's like almost all my money. Um, too long? Let's... Is there an easier option, maybe? No, you know what? We're going. Road trip. It was expensive. A non-stop drive was too dangerous. No way. I decided not to risk it and look for another route. Well, what would you give me the option for? Um, we're going to go by train, I guess. Or maybe, maybe by bus? Is bus cheap? 120 euros. That's pretty cheap. From Warsaw to Barcelona. Easy journey. Even if it's a bit boring. I'll take the bus. Only option available is 40 hours in a bus. I'd arrive in Barcelona way too late. No way. <laughs> Stop giving me the options then. <laughs> Already six. There wasn't much time left to go shopping today if I needed to. Um, we're going to go by plane? Or by train, I mean. Spent some time looking through these things. We can learn some more. Check the price of the train tickets. How much? Oh, only 100. That's cheap. Man, trains in the U.S. are expensive. Are they that cheap in Europe? Um... Yeah, I'll buy them. Okay, time to go. Do I need to repack? Am I good to go? No, no, we're good. We're good. We got our PJs. We're good. This is the morning sun. For years, I've avoided Warsaw Central Station. It still exists in my memory from a confusing, as a confusing maze of underground passages full of secondhand bookstores and sickly sweet mixture of sweat and not quite Chinese food. Suspicious looking shops selling cheap, useless junk. That was all gone now, replaced by spice lattes, chain restaurants, and electric dis electronic displays. Um, I'm just going to hurry up my platform. Forget the nostalgia. Just get the platform. 
Train was already there, quietly waiting for passengers. I heard someone calling my name. As I was getting to my seat, I heard someone call my name. If I'd known, we could have booked seats in the same compartment. It was Magda, loud and direct as always. She was on her way to visit her family in Poznan. Uh, I didn't think you had it in you, she said, looking at my travel gear. I shrugged. Not sure if I could feel proud of myself or embarrassed. In a good way, I mean, she insisted. I'm pr so proud you're taking a leap of faith and doing something so adventurous. With this date in Barcelona, do you think it'll really happen? Good question. For a whole year, I'd done everything to forget that that night. Uh, but when the time came, I just dropped everything and packed my bags, and here I was. What was I counting on? Um, you know what? Forget the girl. I want to see the world. This is a good chance, I answered. Obviously, I was more afraid of letting the chance go the, than of stepping outside my comfort zone. So there I was on my way to Barcelona, and there was no going back. In a day, I knew how it would end. I had a bad feeling about this. I had it all planned. The journey would be full of new experiences, and my goal was beautiful Barcelona. Be safe and had fun. Have fun. Don't forget to send me a postcard. Magda patted me on the shoulder. The train shot out of the pitch black tunnel into the morning sun. My journey had begun. Familiar Warsaw suburbs disappeared in the distance. I can think. I can watch. Oh, past an ugly gray town that was being soaked by rain. We can. Let's just think. Lost in thoughts. I wondered who lived in those houses. I saw through the window. What do they do for a living? What were their hopes and dreams? My thoughts drifted back to Barcelona. To the meeting one year ago. I didn't even ask what her name was. How did I miss that? Let's look around. I knew she'd be waiting for me. I looked around. I've been lost in my thoughts for so long. I got a peaceful thing now. I'm in a peaceful mood right now. Yellow fields were dotted in the bales of hay. Kids waved as the passing train waved back. Near the tracks, there were uh, industrial buildings. Derelict and overrun with weeds. Got ticket control. What does that do? Conductor approaching. Tickets, please. Passengers who are all, always ready for the conductor, they keep their tickets inside of their breast pocket for the jackets or on the folding table in their excitedly shaking hands. The passengers who use as much of the conductor's time and energy as possible. They keep their tickets at the bottom of that small bag tucked inside that heavy suitcase that they just put up the rack with the help of their fellow passengers. There are passengers who just reach inside the wallets. Yeah, whatever. Um. Oh, yeah, my ticket's ready. I have my ticket ready. It had been in my hand since the train left. Presented it to the conductor before she even asked. Picture uh, on her name tag was All Smile and Charm. And a younger, less jaded version of the woman standing in front of me. Reservations for the train from Berlin are not included in your interrail ticket, she told me indifferently. Huh? I'm not included in your interrail ticket. What do I do? Buy it from the conductor as soon as you board your next train, she advised. Have a nice journey. Reached for my phone and soon learned that apart from my interrail ticket, I'd have to pay extra for reservations on intercity trains. The TGV. I should have checked that before I left. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I put 50 euros aside for extra costs. Good thing I did that. <laughs> well, not really. I actually took it out of my pocket anyway. Passengers who aren't phased by minor hiccups. Uh, well, not me. Piercing Blair, another train passed us. Mm -hmm. Enormous... Jesus de Suibodzin loomed in the distance. Uh, let's go to the dining car. Let's have a bite. I was so hungry, I went to the dining car. Found a seat, ordered something. Didn't even notice when we crossed the border. I'm eating while we're trying to change trains here. Finished eating, went back to my seat. Changed trains in Berlin. Berlin Ostbahnhof. Hit under the curved roof of steel and glass. As I disembarked, Berliners crowded onto the S-Bahn platforms. Where's my connection? Not sure which track my train departed from. I focused on the displays and the announcements. Unfamiliar German words like long, clattering trains were all I saw. I focused on trying to find something that would point me in the right direction. Lost in thought, I strained my neck to find some kind of intelligible sign. I let my feet take the whole walking business. Uh, I crashed into her at full speed, or I noticed her at low... You know, let's crash into her. I crashed into her at full speed, knocked her over, and sent her bags flying. She was about my age, dressed practically for travel, long black hair, pale skin, Asian, Japanese, maybe. Her huge backpack kept tipping her over as she tried to get up. So sorry, I didn't see you, she huffed. Um, I help her get up. 
offering my deepest apologies. Her hands were soft and warm. That was my problem in a nutshell, I thought. Um, I always made a fool of myself. Especially when I wanted to make a good impression. Like now, for example. I turned around and picked up her bag. When she reached to take it from my hand, she winced in pain as I noticed she was limping. No, no, don't worry. She saw the look on my face. My ankle was already twisted. I tripped this morning in the shower. Um, yeah, where are you going? I asked, caught somewhere between a small talk and curiosity. Warsaw, she answered, then looked alarmed when she saw the nearest display. Sorry, I have to hurry. She refastened her huge backpack and started limping towards the stairs. Wait, I'll help you. Yeah, I'll help you. I ran after her. We had to hobble down one flight of stairs and up another. But I took the bags and she grabbed the handrail. We eventually managed to find her train and got her on board. Have a nice journey. She leaned out the window, smiling. Um, <laughs> I have a day in Warsaw. Okay, have a nice stay in Warsaw. I waved and ran to catch my train. Ask her what her name is. I was so tired. My muscles hurt after all the heavy lifting. Uh, ooh, high fatigue from that. Uh, still no wonder when I arrived. Uh, I, it was no wonder that when I arrived, sweating and out of breath, my platform was already empty. Oh, boy. The stress is going to the roof. I'm peaceful and sad now. This wasn't good. Not at all good at all. My whole plan was starting to fall apart. I just hoped there was other trains to Paris. Look for a connection. Luckily, there was one. From uh, Berlin to Paris. I left in an hour. That train will do. This time I actually caught the train. One catastrophe was enough for it. A catastrophe? Whatever. Forget the Barcelona, girl. You got one right there. Small houses, red roofs, white walls, neat green gardens. Sometimes Germany looked like it was built from a bunch of carefully placed blocks, each fitting perfectly with each other. Um, let's, um, is my fatigue high? Is that what they're trying to tell me? Maybe we should sleep? Let's just watch people. I'm not, I think that maybe, that, maybe I need to put that, maybe I need to go lower, I think. I'm super tired, I guess. Look at the young man staring at his laptop. He was dressed in smart slacks and a shirt. He must have been a businessman. Sales representative, maybe? We're just being a creeper now. Focus on the screen. He paid no attention to other passengers. Talk to the guy? No, no, don't be that guy. Let's just look outside. He picked his nose. <laughs> okay. Look away. I felt sad. We passed another small tourist village. Funny how they look different in every country, but in a way, they're always the same. Planes surrounded us, punctuated only by the red roofs of a distant village. I saw a gothic church in the distance. Two spires soared into the sky, slim like sharp knives. Uh, let's sleep. I have, to, I have to change trains already? Dreams came as soon as I closed my eyes. I was walking along a narrow sight street surrounded by colorful houses. My fatigue went down a tiny bit. I woke up, good, in Dusseldorf. The station was huge and crowded with people. I didn't have a lot of time, again. I was nervous and tired. The journey just seemed to be another chore. Time was a funny thing when you traveled, especially at train stations. Sometimes it was slow. Yeah. Differently here. Small towns that people wanted to escape from. It was still slow, but Dusseldorf was different. It felt chaotic, dangerous even. Things shouldn't be like this. I needed everything to be stable and predictable. Uh, a wave of people swept me away. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Uh, for a moment, I lost where I was. I couldn't stop or change directions. So I just went along with the crowd. One second, I was surrounded by kids in yellow caps, a school trip. And the next familiar th throng of travelers was around me again. Lovers, friends, families, lone wolves, busy people on business trips... I was alone. A stranger in their midst. It frightened me. I felt unseen, unimportant, lost. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, I headed toward my platform. As I made my way along the corridor, I saw one of the kids in the yellow caps. He was 14, maybe 15 years old. I tried not to look panicked. Probably was. His yellow flock had nowhere to be seen, and his phone was in him. looked dead. Uh, we gotta help him. Hey, kid, you alright? Everything okay? Yeah, he said. Uh, he, he said, yeah. He said, obviously lying, a hint of anger in his eyes, at himself, at the world, and for me for noticing his weakness. It was a tough being a teenager, I know. I don't want to leave him there. Um, he's a teenager, he'll be alright. Um, alright kid, fine, kid, fine. You sure we can go to the info port, uh, point, uh, ask them to put an announcement out for you? No, he protested. Well, I could understand that, if they uh, called his teacher through the PA system, like he was a kid lost in a mall. His friends would never let him down. Give you my power bank. No, I can't give him my power bank. I need that. Stay here, it'll only get worse. If I stay here and get back to my and get back myself, I'll be uh search for the word for a minute. <laughs> That's, uh, this kid was dumb. <laughs> okay, listen. My phone rang. 
Before I could finish, my phone rang anxiously. I looked at the screen. It was Magda. I picked up hesitantly. What is it? I asked rather harshly. Hey, I just wanted to check in on you. You know, see how you are? She answered. I heard the teasing tone in her voice, and I knew why she was calling. She thought I'd chicken out and come back to Warsaw. That's nice. Thanks for thinking of me, but I can't really talk right now. I'm between trains and Dusseldorf, and there's this kid I should really... I stopped mid-sentence, realizing the kid was gone. Seriously? You're in Dusseldorf? What happened? Uh, I don't have time to talk. Sorry, Magda, but I, I can't right now. I gotta, I'll get that postcard you wanted, and we'll grab a beer when I get back, okay? For a moment, there was silence. Ah, she said slowly. Slowly. I don't know what's going into you, but there's a good change. Really good. I'm happy for you. For once, you sounded serious. For uh, some reason, that threw me off balance. I was thinking about my journey. So far, nothing really bad had happened. And yet, after practically a whole day in transit, I was tired. I was still amazed that I had dared to go on this trip. So how was I feeling without my safety net? Not so good. <laughs> Views outside the window were changing constantly. But uh, were they really worth seeing? I had my doubts, after all. Uh, new didn't always mean better. What I was I doing? For a moment, I was utterly lost, drifting without a purpose or destination, my home far behind, an unknown future ahead of me. Anyway, the kid was gone off his own adventure. That wasn't what I'd planned. Maybe he was right. He was dumb. He'd probably gone home safely and have a story to tell. His friends would look at him in awe. He'd get more confident and be less afraid in life, knowing that he could get by on his own. As the train moved out of the station, I was still lost in my thoughts. Am I on the train? Did I actually get on the train? Okay, good. <laughs> good. Uh, there's a lake. Old fisherman looking at us wistfully. Can I sleep now? I'm really tired. I got four hours till I get to Paris. Uh, let's look at some people, I guess. I'm really tired. Someone in the corridor is talking loudly. Shut up! Elderly lady was watching a video of her granddaughter on her phone. Turned the volume all the way up. It was annoying. Two teenagers, two teenagers across from me giggled. A man was sleeping next to me. His head almost resting on my shoulder. Let's just, let's just think. Look at my reflection. Watch people and imagined who they were, what they were doing when not traveling. I yawned. The journey was harder than I expected. I'm super tired. Sleep! We got an hour of sleep here. My thoughts scattered. Slowly falling asleep, I drifted off and started to dream. I tried to read, but I had no book. Oh, well, you know. I got PJs, though. Tell me, why are you afraid of traveling? She looked at me over her drink. I realized I'd missed the next train. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Now what? Plans gave way to graffiti covered brick and concrete as the train arrived in Paris. I woke up. Oh good, we made it. Oh wait, do we miss the other one though? Oh yeah, we spent a night here in Paris. First thing I learned that uh, the metro services were on strike. When I finally emerged from the belly of Gare du Nord, it was almost 10.30pm, my train to Barcelona was departing from Gare de Leon a few minutes after seven the following morning, despite the Parisian nightlife calling me, calling to me, I just wanted to get some sleep. Frankly speaking, I had no idea how to spend the night. I looked around. Curiously. I'd never been to Paris before. The city wasn't what I expected. There was dirt and noise wherever I looked. The homeless man was nagging a drunk in front of a nearby di uh, dive. Taxi drivers were shouting at each other in the street. A nearby dumpster th throbbed with the hot smell of stale alcohol and vomit. I shuddered. Uh, am I hungry? Um, I got to call a taxi. Uh, let's go get some, something to eat. I'm sad and calm. I was hungry, so I went to the bar across the street. Ordered some finger food because it was all they had. Surprisingly good. Maybe my empty stomach talking. Um, you know, let's let's walk. What's the worst that can happen? So I had to walk and see more of the city, hoping I'd find a place to spend the night. Leaving the train station behind, I headed toward the Plaza de Republique. There seemed to be two routes. One along a busy road, and the other along some quiet back streets. A uh, busy road, yeah. So it was a busy road. After a brisk walk, I reached the square. Uh, Plaza de la Republique was surrounded by bars and restaurants full of partying crowds. Uh, we gotta get some sleep, right? We're, we get some sleep. Still sad. Turned into a wide green boulevard surrounded by intimate little parks and squares. Ooh, that's nice. Let's stay here. Down the boulevard, there was a quiet little park. The night was warm and... Uh, calm, heavy with the smell of flowers. Let's get a hotel. Oh, a hostel nearby. That's what that's that's what we want. Let's get a hostel. Smoke. In front of the host, the hostel was a group of young people laughing, speaking a mix of language, drinking beer and smoking. Air smelled of weed. I stood clear of them, asking for uh, and asked the receptionist for a place to sleep. They only had a bed in an eight-person room for ten euro. Euros. Um. 
Maybe we should get a hotel. I don't want to sleep with other people. I, I'm leaving it at 7 in the morning. You know, I'm not going to see them. Fine, fine. 10 bucks. I can handle that. Took the bed. I was too tired to look for anything else. When I came back from the showers, I saw the party had moved indoors. Party people were sitting in the corridor. One guy was blocking the door to my room. When he saw me, he offered me a beer. Come on, join us. You look interesting enough. He lit a joint and blew out a cloud of smoke. I'm Matt, by the way. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm tired. I'm tired. I reached to the door. That was cold. They started laughing. Come on, stay for a while. Sleep is overrated. Apart from Matt, who I learned was a producer in some tech company, there was Paul, who was about to get married in a few days, and Heinrich, a mild-looking balding, and the oldest of the bunch. We talked, apparently. About movies, games, books, about places we've been and places we wanted to visit, someone started playing music videos. They couldn't believe the others didn't know. Outrageously awful. The more I drank, the more I depressed I felt. Soon I, I found myself in the middle of a heavy conversation. I have to break up with her, Paul sobbed. We're supposed to get married in a week, and I'm supposed to dare to do it. I like my life. I don't want to change, not yet. Oh, yeah, I understand. Whatever. Whatever, Paul. I'm, I'm tired, Paul. So I understand what you're going through, man. I felt deeply moved by this story. I don't have a clue what he's, what he's talking about. I don't even have a girlfriend. I'm just some guy that goes to Barcelona from someone who... who <laughs> never mind, never mind. <laughs> Maybe it was too close to home, but I felt like I should say something. Um, you're not alone, buddy. That's always a nice thing to say. Not unique, you know. I tried to say it gently. Just take a look at me. I told him my story. I tried to smoke for a long time. Finally, I went to bed. Okay. Shout out strangers. I slept like a baby. In the morning, after a nice walk and an early breakfast at the station, I boarded the train. Next stop, Barcelona. Okay. And I think it's a good place to call it today. So this is Wanderlust. It's it's different. It's weird. But uh, it's, it, I like showing off the weird ones. This one certainly fits that bill. Uh, this is available on Steam. I'll put a link below, and you can check it out if you like. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.